Well, if you remember back in November, our friend Dave brought this uh, 8V92TA in. He purchased it to put in his Cena Cruiser bus, and it was getting uh, coolant in the oil. So we did a teardown on it, found all kinds of issues. It only had 5,000 miles on it, though. So we wanted to find all the parts that were bad, need to be replaced, and we were going to go through it and then just reassemble it, fix the problems, and then uh, if anything got damaged by the water being in there, go through and fix that, too. So this is part two of that series. I'll put a link to part one if you hadn't seen it. I'll put a link below uh, so you can go back and watch that first if you would like. Okay, we're checking the, for a vacuum on the wrist pin retainers here. It can cause a heck of an oil leak if they're not, if it won't hold a vacuum. There's pressurized oil going through there. Oh, you have the tool over there too? Okay, Where did, where'd you get your suction cup at? I have one. Oh, okay. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very easy. Careful of the O rings. Yeah. And my hands. Okay, I've got the rod. Okay. Have to just jiggle it a little bit. There you go. Is it clocked good? Yeah, I'm halfway to the crank already. Okay, go ahead, go ahead and give it just a little tap. Lightly. I'll just push it in by hand. Yeah. And then he's going to have you push the piston down in a second. Yep, whenever you're ready. Keep going. There you go. Your hand is not a hammer. <laughs> you were using your hand as a hammer on a hammer. <laughs> I do that all the time. It's more control. Yeah. I'm just going to tap this. Uh, yep, go ahead. Just want to make sure to see it. Okay, so we replaced this valve here. This was part of the problem. The, the valve, it wasn't closing all the way, right? Because the keeper was, or didn't have the right pressure on it, at least for sure. Yeah, the keeper um, had two grooves in it. Valve's yeah. there if you want a picture of it. Where's it at? Yeah, so the keepers had slipped from their original position and had moved up and made a new groove there. I, I don't know how it didn't drop a valve. He was very, very yeah. lucky. But uh, again, this engine only had 5,000 miles on it. I was putting water in the pit. It was a problem with the way the head and the block were together. That's what it was leaking from in between uh, two of the holes there. And we're holding a vacuum on the new valve that he ground in this morning. So we're good to go. So again, they only have like 5,000 miles on them since the rebuild on this engine. So we are putting all the used parts back together. But he spent days and days cleaning, <laughs> and we're finally ready to go. We do have the uh, eight liner kits got reinstalled yesterday. So the engine has all of that stuff done. So the, it's all back in there. So we do have some rust and pitting on some of these uh, cam followers, but we tore down another engine uh, that we're going to replace them with ones that are in much, you know, a whole box full of them here, much better shape. So. Um, this had some surface rust on it, which he cleaned everything up real good. Uh, everything looks good here. It's just, yeah, a few of these we're not going to reuse them because they're pretty nasty looking. This was actually broke when we took the engine apart. This is the, the newer style that they're actually more brittle. So we grabbed the older style that he had on the other engine. We're going to replace them with this older style that we like a little bit better. So 
we're measuring our liner heights here and make sure everything's good. We're definitely concerned because between this cylinder here and this one with the head, we had a problem. And we were thinking possibly it was liner heights. So, might have been too much of a variation between the two, but right now we're looking good. Okay, so the holds downs are torques at 50 foot pounds. Yep, and then we're looking for a measurement here. We have a very specific range in the book, but they can't be more than a thousand and a half between the two adjacent cylinders. Uh, 0 0.047. Yeah, 6, 8. 6, 8. 6, 8, 6, 9. Okay. So, the, so far, everything is checked out on the left side and the right side, all of our numbers. Seven, two. Okay. Which is really good because we put the oil pan back on earlier and if we had to pull that off <laughs> and put a shim in there, I got a, a whole bunch of shims here. Um, they're super thin. They're coming really handy for all kinds of things too. So, yeah, that would have sucked if we had to pull one out with a shim in it at this point. Only because we put the oil pan back on. Special thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join, and every month they introduce members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home kitchen goods, clothing, and more. Uh, it's all based on a quiz that you take when you sign up and it's free to sign up. Uh, each box has around a $70 value, but you pay just a fraction of that if you choose to purchase the box. These are some of our subscription boxes from Bespoke Post. We have Slash, which is this really cool kind of machete knife. And then we have a nice hatchet. And then also the Weekender, which is a canvas travel bag. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the U.S. That's a really cool feature. You only pay for what you want. Uh, you'll get to review the box that's assigned to you, and you can decide then if you want to either accept the offer, you can swap it out for a totally different box, or you can skip the month entirely with no charge. This Weekender bag has a vintage-inspired style with heavy-duty canvas, leather handles and straps, and a reinforced frame. It's fun to get a new box in the mail every month with something really cool inside. You can also give them as gifts. I know all my friends have birthdays coming up this year. Clearing off these little branches on this cedar tree, and this does work really well. It's real quick and easy to go through the online quiz and select the things that you're most interested in so they can best choose a box to fit your needs. Click the link in the description below for 20% off your first box. We have all of our little rubber overing head gaskets on. Uh, put this one in with grease the front of her. Uh, we have all the crushed rings on. There's a very thin metal ring there. Yeah, we have a couple guide studs. You find it on or you different? <laughs> Pins in. Okay, this side is all ready to go. All the O-rings, crush rings, and perimeter gasket are in. Good to go. We're just lifting it by hand, and then we have the guide studs in there. <laughs> so these are all the ones we opted not to use because <laughs> we had good replacements. Isn't that atrocious?
Just surface rust. <laughs> so this morning he's got the jakes on here. The bridges are all adjusted properly. And then uh, we're gonna put the fuel lines on. That's what we're starting to do right now. The fuel jumper's over here. Got the new, new washers under the stands. We'll get the racks put on this morning. We can do the, the tune-up side of the exhaust valves, the fuel injectors, timing, uh, and the jake brakes. That can all get adjusted. And then we gotta wait to get the governor back on to set the everything on the rack. So we'll get all the, the timing stuff done, but it's starting to look really nice. It's getting close. We can see the end coming. Yes, we can. We'll be making noise in a couple more days work. So we switched the blowers. This this one was a, a D deck blower. This was a D deck blower. So this end plate was on it. Yeah. And then this one had a governor on it. So the the governor needs to control everything, the fuel and everything, but the D deck, the computer does it. But this blower was really worn, not in very good condition at all. The the new one is the other one is much better. He had well, you have three engines to choose from, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're putting the, the best of the best. So yeah, this is a much, much better condition blower here. Shake it just to get the spine started. Um, let me turn, just like turn the lobes. Yeah, press on that one. Let me just turn the lobes a little bit. That's good. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see or hear this engine run yet. Uh, he's got a little bit of custom modification work to do. The motor mounts are a little different because it's going in a Scenic Cruiser uh, than what was on here. So because of that, some like we can't put the water pump all the way on yet. He's got to make some modifications to some brackets and stuff. So he's going to go home and finish that. We also don't have the flywheel for it here. So he's going to finish the modifications. Hopefully in about a month or so, he'll get this completed and running in his Scenic Cruiser.
This will be interesting. Well, we're going to find out what the tongue weight is on this trailer. <laughs> Well, that is about 1,700 pounds. Okay. Um, if the load there is the same as there, I don't know if it makes a difference. A little bit. Not much, but it's less than I would have thought. Yeah. Although the Detroit is towards the back. Yeah. Yeah, there's a the 8V70 or 8V92 is in the back. <laughs> there's a lot of weight in there. It's between the axles. That's probably about as much weight as one of your cars, for sure, right? Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, no. You can see that white smoke rising up the holler through the trees and from a mile away you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease but at the top of that mountain there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run if they can make it to the top sky will put them in the shop till their new life has begun Where the buses come to run Bus Grease Mountain We're gonna get that big job done